friends, it's Cherie, and today I'm going to be sharing with you all the things that I made in the months of November and December. But before we get into all those makes, first I want to say welcome to my channel if you're new to my channel, and if you're a returning person, thank you so much for your continued support. It truly means the world to me. Alright, let's get into it. <laughs> tuning into this video. I cannot wait to share with you all of the things that I made in November and December. But first I want to just say that I thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey. This marks my one year sewing anniversary. That's right folks, one year. I received my sewing machine for Christmas last year and I started sewing in January of 2020. And so when I first got my machine, I knew nothing about sewing aside from what I had seen on YouTube um, and so I went from making some very basic things and just hemming clothing and fixing buttons and things of that nature to now turning out some really nice garments and I'm just so appreciative of all the wonderful advice that you all have given me over this year all the tips and tricks that you've shared with me the pattern suggestions all of it I thank you for your continued support and for your friendship it has been so amazing so thank you so much for being with me on this journey in sewing in 2020. All right, let's get into all the things that I made. I want to be honest and let you know that this is not the first time that I filmed this video, okay? I actually filmed it before and realized that the batteries in my mic died. <laughs> so editing is still a challenge for me and it is something that I definitely want to set a goal for in 2021 is improving the quality of my videos and ironing out any of these editing issues that I have on a regular basis. <laughs> YouTube isn't easy and if someone told you that it was, they lied to you, okay? <laughs> there are lots of things that you have to do and lots of things that go into creating videos. So bear with me as I go through another year and I, you know, continue to improve on my skill. <laughs> I thank you so much for your patience, okay, and your forgiveness as it pertains to me flubbing up things in the process. All right, let's get into it. The very first thing that I made was two pairs of Tilly and the Buttons Juno pajama bottoms. Now, I love the Juno pajamas. I have made a couple of pair for myself in the beginning of my sewing journey, and I want to actually show it to you. The Juno pajamas are a part of the Make It Simple book, and I have mentioned this book in several videos before because... It is a book that I heavily relied on in the beginning of my sewing journey and it taught me so many things and I've enjoyed making lots of the patterns in this book. But the Juno Pajamas is definitely one of my favorites and I'll show you a picture of what the pajamas look like in the book and then I will also show you a picture of the little pajama bottoms that I created. Now I made two pairs of these, one pair for my sister and one pair for me. And this is what the Juno pajamas looks like. This is the bottoms here. And so basically, I had made my sister a sweatshirt in November. Or actually, no, I made it in October for November. And the sweatshirt is the Seamwork Rudy sweatshirt. And I used this really fun double brushed poly fabric for the hood and for the lining of the sweatshirt. So I thought it'd be really cool to make her pajama pants that match those uh, prints on the hoodie. So I used that same double brush poly fabric to create the pajama pants and I added black ribbed cuffing on the ankles um, to match the black strings of the hoodie. I love the way this came out. It was so cozy and if she had let me I would have definitely posted a picture of her wearing this two-piece set which she has been enjoying wearing um, but she didn't want me to do that. So I will insert a picture of what the set looks like together. I'm very proud of it. If you're looking for a cozy nice pajama set the Juno pajamas is a really Really great pattern to follow and it's so comfortable and cozy. <laughs> now I did make myself a pair as well because if you watch that video then you know that I made several pairs of that or several of those sweatshirts trying to get the perfect fit for my sister and so the ones that didn't fit her I kept for myself and so I was able to have a matching set with my sister and my sister and I match a lot we always have since we were little kids so she didn't mind me having a matching set. <laughs> Alright, so the next thing that I 
made was the Seamwork Male Sweatpants, and I believe they actually are probably called joggers. And for this particular pattern, I actually had to hack it a bit so that the waistband fit me a little bit better. I do fall between two different sizes, and so I had to alter the waistband so that it fit me a little bit more appropriately. And it was an easy fix. It fit really nicely. I really enjoyed making these sweatpants. They are really nice. Now, in the beginning of my sewing journey, I mentioned that I'm not a huge fan of joggers because I don't like my ankles to be cold. <laughs> so what I did is I lengthened the pattern a little bit so that my ankles would not show. And I used that same black ribbing that I used for the pajama pants on the cuff band of these joggers to give it a little bit more length. I like the way it came out. I think that this sweatsuit is very cute and stylish wearing that Rudy sweatshirt with the Mel sweatpants. I've worn it so many times since I've made it and I think I'll probably make more sets with that those two patterns. So that's a good one. Now for those pants, I use some sweatshirt fleece that I purchased from Girl Charlie in that terracotta color. And I have to say that this is probably one of my favorite sweatshirt colors that I've found so far. Okay, so the next thing that I made is the Seamwork Thin Raglan T-shirt. Now, I love this pattern. I have made quite a few Raglan T-shirts, and I always find something wrong with the fit. And one of the issues is I'm a busty person, and you know with Raglans, they cut right here. And sometimes where the pattern cuts isn't very flattering to my bust even with doing bust adjustments and such. So I was really pleasantly surprised to find that this particular Braglin pattern actually fit me nicely in the bust without having to make any alterations there. Also, I lengthened the sleeve because I do not like a three quarter length sleeve. I don't like my arms to be exposed. I need it to either be a short sleeve shirt or a long sleeve shirt. So I lengthened the sleeves and to be perfectly honest, if I had to do it again, I'd probably add another inch to them um, so that they would be closer to like where this sweater hits my wrist. Um, but I did make two of these shirts. The first one actually used this really great white cotton fabric for the front and the back pieces. And in my Girl Charlie haul, I mentioned that this particular cotton wasn't very soft. But once I washed it and used a fabric sheet, a fabric softener sheet in the dryer, I found that it made it extremely soft and comfortable. And I'm so glad that I purchased that fabric. So I plan to make lots more shirts with that fabric. But I used the white cotton for the front and the back. And then I used this really great leftover jersey fabric that I purchased for my Tilling the Buttons Lotta dress that I shared in my last makes video. And I used that to create the sleeves in the neckband. Oh, I just love the way this shirt came out. I have worn it so many times. I want to forgive the quality of a couple of these pictures because they were taken with my iPhone and for whatever reason, it came out a bit grainy. It wasn't as clear. I think it has something to do with the remote that I used um, when taking those pictures. So not all my pictures are like that, but a couple of them are kind of grainy and not so great. But this is what I have, and I hope that you can see how nice the shirts came out in these pictures. All right, since I love that version so much, I actually decided to make another version. And in the second version, I used this really great stretch velvet fabric that I purchased. And it is like this really bright blue and it's so soft. I will say one thing though, I do kind of wish I had used a ribbing for the neckband instead of using that stretch velvet for the neckband because this stretch velvet wasn't as stretchy as I hoped it would be. So it worked out really great for the arms and it does look really nice as a neckband, but it was extremely fiddly. So while I do love the way this came out and I love it so much because the actual color reminds me of the Cookie Monster and when I wear it, I just remember when my boys were babies and I would pretend to be the Cookie Monster and I would tickle them and tease them and play with them and just every time I wear it, I just think about those little laughs that are, would erupt from them and it makes me so happy. So I'm very happy that I made it, but I would tweak that by doing a different neckband if I had to do it again in the future. So those were the two fin tops that I made. The next thing that I made is the Made for Mermaids Fake Cardigan. I made two versions of this particular cardigan. The first one was a test run. 
Now this particular pattern is one that I received in my Thread Crate subscription and I love this pattern. First of all, it's extremely versatile. It has lots of different versions, different sleeve lengths, different neck bands, and it also has different lengths. There's a tunic length, a cardigan length, and then a duster length. So you could change up this pattern in so many different ways, make so many different cardigans, and they would all look very, very different. And it's all in one pattern. So I really love this pattern. I really love Thread Crate. If you haven't checked out that subscription service yet, you really should. It's extremely affordable and it has such great value. It comes with so many things. Um, and so this very first one that I made, I used the fabric that came in that crate and it was this great gray hacky fabric. And it's very lightweight and perfect for lounging in the house in. And so that's exactly how I use it. It actually replaced a cardigan that I got rid of that was the same color. And it's just soft and lightweight and perfect for just cozying up in the house. Now, since I like the way that version came out so much, I actually decided to make another version using a sweater material. Now, I use the fabric that I purchased from my Melanated Fabric haul, and I believe I shared that. Yes, I did. I shared that this particular fabric in that haul video. And it is just such a great bright blue. And I thought this would be really perfect for my mother-in-law. I could totally envision her cozying up with this cardigan and it's a heavier sweater so she can wear it out and about as well as in the house. And so I made that for her for Christmas and I actually um, was very proud about how it came out. It did take me some time because I had to match up the sweater knit, um, I don't know what it's called, but the sweater cable knit. Um, of the waistband and the front and back pieces of the cardigan as well as the neckband and I'm really proud about how it came out and my mother-in-law enjoyed it so it was definitely worth all the extra time that it took to make and I love the way it came out. If you haven't tried any fabrics from Melanated Fabrics yet you really should because let me tell you the quality of their fabric is unmatched. This sweater fabric that I purchased was so lovely I actually got two other colors so I can't wait to use it again in a future video hopefully. Alright, so the next thing that I made was the Tilling the Buttons um, Billy Sweatshirt. Now this Billy Sweatshirt, I've made several versions of. This particular one I made out of a French terry that I got from Girl Charlie. It's so lightweight and soft and I just love the way it came out. I have lots of leopard print fabric because I'm into that, okay? It's in different colors and you will be seeing lots more prints in the future. This particular one is kind of like a cream base and it has these really great black leopard prints and on the center of the leopard print is like a coral color and I just love the way this came out. I haven't seen anything like it in stores and so I'm proud to have been able to create something unique for myself. And I do like the way it came out but I do kind of wish I would have used, instead of using black thread, I wish I would have used like a thread that was more on the cream side that matched the background of the actual sweatshirt. Regardless, it's lovely. I enjoy wearing it. It's perfect layering weight, so you can wear it if you want it lightweight. You can wear it by itself, but if you want a little bit more warmth, you can put a long sleeve t-shirt underneath, and because it's so stretchy, it doesn't compromise the shape of the sweatshirt. And I just think it's a really great piece to have added to my closet, so I'm proud about that make. Now, since that came out so well, I thought it would be nice to hack the Billy Bag pattern using another French Terry fabric that I purchased from Girl Charlie. It is of the same quality, lightweight, soft, very stretchy. And this particular one I love because it has two separate prints or colors going on it. The top half is this really great, bright, corally, orangey, red color. And on the bottom half is another leopard print. Now because I didn't want to waste any of that fabric and I just love it so much, I actually decided to omit a waist cuff for this particular sweatshirt and I also omitted the wrist cuffs so that it could just be long and straight and I used every inch of that fabric. So it's kind of like in between um, a dress and a long sweatshirt. And I love the way it came out. And in lengthening the arms, for some people that might not be their cup of tea because they are quite long, but I just love the way that looks. And it's so comfortable and I was able to show off all of that fabric. So I'm happy about the way that it came out. 
All right, so the next thing that I made was I upcycled a pair of my husband True Religion corduroys. Now he gave me a basket full of old jeans that he no longer wears, which were in beautiful condition. And so I decided that I wanted a midi length corduroy skirt. And so what I did is I actually took out the stitches on the insides of the legs and in the back of the skirt pants, <laughs> I actually stitched the two back legs together and on the front, I kind of was creative about how I repositioned the crotch seam of those pants and I closed up quite a bit of the front of the pants combining the front legs and I created a split in the front. I shortened it, hemmed it, and I also took in the hips of that skirt so that it would have more of a curved shape because as you know, men's pants are a little bit more straight up and down and I needed a little curve. So I took in the sides of the skirt and created a curve and I have now a really wonderful maxi skirt. Maxi skirt or midi skirt? Which one is correct? <laughs> anyway, I have a new skirt that I love and it's corduroy and warm. If there's anything that I would change about this pattern, I would actually make the slit a little bit higher so that it would be a little bit easier to run in, a little bit easier to go up and down my stairs in. But other than that, I think it was a lovely upcycle and I can't wait to do more of those. The next thing that I made was a pair of faux fur slippers for my mother-in-law. And so for these particular slippers, I wanted to use faux fur, like animal fur on the outside and Sherpa on the inside. And so at the time, Joann's didn't have any on sale and I needed it quick because I didn't have a lot of time to sew and I knew I wanted to get it done. Now the pattern that I used for this particular sewing project was free and it is a Tilly the Button pattern that you can download from their website and it's lovely and it's easy and it's a great way to get through some of those fabric scraps that you may have in your stash and it would be a really great pattern to like color block because there's so many small pieces to it so just a you know nugget thought that you could share I think I actually might do that in the future um, but anyway I totally used that pattern and since there was no fabric on sale that I wanted to use at Joann's I went on Amazon and I found a blanket that was uh, like a wolf looking fur on the outside and then on the flip side it was actually Sherpa and I separated those two pieces and so it ended up being I want to say about a yard and a half maybe a little bit more than that of each fabric and I think I got the blanket for like $14 or something like that and I was able to get three pairs of slippers out of it and so I love the way it came out but I do want to say that both sewing with faux fur and Sherpa can be a bit messy and it could be too because I used a blanket that I cut up rather than buying the actual yardage of fabric and cutting it that way but fur got everywhere and Sherpa got everywhere but it's so beautiful and I love the way it came out they're nice and soft and cozy and my mother-in-law enjoyed them a lot I did go ahead and add some of that slip grip I think that's what it's called but it's a fabric that has little plasticky rubbery dots on the bottom to keep you from slipping and sliding on tiles so I added that on the bottom so that she can go to the kitchen for a snack without worrying about slipping anyway so I made three pairs of those and I really like the way those came out. The next thing that I made is the Seamwork Brit dress. And this is the dress that I made for my mother. It was my very first sew along. So if you watched that video, thank you so much for your support. It was definitely appreciated. I really enjoyed sewing something with you. And while it was a project, let me tell you, it wasn't easy to set up or to edit. I'm just happy that I actually did it and I hope to do more sew alongs with you in the future. If you'd like to see some more sew alongs, please let me know if there's any sew alongs in particular you want to see, any patterns you'd like to see me try, let me know in the comments below. But I really enjoyed making that for my mother and I will be honest with you, I made two of those. The one that I filmed and the one that I filmed, I love the way it came out, but after looking at it on my mannequin for a while and also putting it up against my body, I felt like maybe it was a little too long. So the second version that I made, I actually shortened the length and I changed the neckband a bit. So in that video, I used this exact stitch on the neckband and for the version that I actually gifted my mother, I went ahead and used a twin needle. 
Um, but that was the only thing that I changed. Other than that, it's exactly the same, only a little bit shorter. And I'm just so proud of how it came out. I love the fact that I was able to pattern match all of the hound's tooth and so everything lined up so beautifully. My mom really likes it and that is what it's all about, folks, is when you give somebody something that you worked hard on is to see the enjoyment that they get from receiving and wearing the item. So I'm really proud about how that came out. Okay, so the next thing that I made was I screen printed two t-shirts and they are raglan sleeve t-shirts and I put Black Panther on them. These were for my boys. My son Cameron had a birthday and he loves Black Panther. So I wanted to be able to create some fun shirts for them to wear on his special day. And so what I did is I used my Cricut Maker, which I purchased for my birthday in November, and I bought sublimation ink transfer sheets. And so I used my Cricut to cut out the um, Black Panther image, which I purchased on Etsy. And then I used my Heat Press 2 to, tr to um, transfer the image onto a sublimation blank, which is the shirt that I purchased from Cricut and I just love the way these came out. I've actually made lots and lots of t-shirts since having done that first couple for Christmas presents for other people and I just love the way it came out. It's been so much fun to create something for family and friends. All right, so after I made those shirts, I actually made some fun shirts for some ladies in my life um, for Christmas. And what I did is I purchased another piece of art from Etsy, and this was, I believe, either a PNG cut file or it was an SVG, but it was about a dollar or two. And it has Kamala Harris, and she's got that deadpan look on her face like this. And she's saying, I'm speaking, okay? And I love the way it came out. And so I made three of those shirts for different women in my family. They came out so lovely. And again, I used that sublimation ink transfer sheets that I got from Cricut. I do wanna let you know though, when you use Cricut sublimation um, sheets, be careful, wear gloves when you're handling it because if you don't, the oils from your fingers will mess up the image when you go to iron it onto the fabric. Um, for whatever reason, the oils take away from the, the actual ink. So when you transfer it, your fingerprints will be in the actual art that goes onto the fabric. So wear gloves, that's a tip. Um, so after I made those, I made another one with Kamala Harris on it and it said the real MVP. Madam Vice President, and I love the way that came out. I made it for my aunt, and again, I used a Cricut Sublimation Blank, so a Cricut t-shirt, and I used Infusible Ink for that as well. Okay, so I made four pairs of Jamie pajama shorts by Tilly and the Buttons. Now, I love making pajamas, but I especially make love making the Jamie and Joe patterns, which are new releases with Tilly and the Buttons, because they're so easy. They're like the best beginner-friendly pajama pattern out there. Um, I like that it has two different options for waistbands, so you can use elastic or you can do, use a drawstring, and I did both for family member uh, for family members and friends, I actually used a drawstring just in case it didn't fit them perfectly in the waist they could cinch it in. For myself, I used both a drawstring and elastic, and I love the way all the versions came out. The reason why I made shorts is because personally for myself, I like to fill blankets on my skin when I go to bed, so I do like having a fleece short pajama, but I do want to have my legs exposed so that I can fill the blankets and I don't overheat. That might be weird to some people, but that's just how I feel. Um, but I also gifted um, the folks that got those shorts that I made, I gifted them also a screen printed t-shirt and also long Sherpa socks that go up to the knee. So if shorts, pajama shorts, isn't their cup of tea, they can have the Sherpa socks to warm their legs. Um, and also for one of my sisters, she got slippers too. Uh, but the fabric that I used for these shorts is I used a black and white buffalo check fabric that I got from Joann's and I also got a black and red uh, buffalo check that I purchased from Joann's for a pair as well. So the next thing that I made is the Tilly and the Button slipper boots using the buffalo check fabric to go along with the shorts that I made for my sister and I paired it with a t-shirt and I'll insert that whole gift set <laughs> in this um, video so that you can see how that looked together. 
and I made another pair of Tilly and the Buttons Juno pajamas, but this time I made a set of top and bottom using this really great pink uh, jersey fabric that I got from Joann's, and it has the word cat all over it, but the way they did the letters, it actually looks like a little cat all over it, and it's gold. It's so pretty. I made it for my sister-in-law. She loves cats, and I thought she might appreciate a fun pair of pajamas. Now, I've never seen her wear pink, so she may hate these, but I really enjoyed making them for her, and they look like store quality, so I was proud about the way they came out, and I'm just happy to be able to give that to her. To go along with that pajama set, I also made her a sleep mask, and the sleep mask is in the shape of cat ears, and so I just love the way that came out as well. The stitch that I chose to do on my machine created a curly edge and it just looks so good. All right, so the next thing that I made was a sweatshirt for my sister. I used the pattern made by Jack's mom, Hot Coffee Hoodie. This is a really great pattern, guys. I have made this pattern for children. I believe that one's called the Hot Chocolate Hoodie. Um, and I've altered that one to fit me, but this one is specifically for men and women. So it's cut perfectly for adult sizes. I made this out of a black sweatshirt fleece that I got from Girl Charlie and I wanted to do something special for her since it has been a tough year. Um, she is actually a dancer. She does lots of different types of dance but she has recently got into pole dancing and pole dancing competitions and something she's passionate about and recently she posted a video on Instagram and like a stalker. <laughs> I went on Instagram and I took some screenshots of some of the cool spins that she did while she was on the pole and I took those images and I printed them on special sheets that you can buy on Amazon um, to put on t-shirts and so I printed those images out and I ironed them onto the sweatshirt that I made using my heat press and I love the way it came out and she actually really enjoyed receiving it and I know she won't be too upset with me if I insert a little picture so I'll slip a picture in there of her wearing it. Don't tell her. <laughs> anyway, um, I made it for her because I wanted to cheer her up and to give her a little something special this Christmas and I think she enjoyed it and so I'm proud about how it came out. All right, so the next thing that I made is two pairs of kid pajama pants, and I used the pattern Simplicity 1520. Now, I've made this pattern several times before in the past, and it is a very easy pattern to follow. It's perfect for children's pajamas. It is a family pajama pattern. However, I want to tell you I do not recommend the adult sizes because I find them to be slightly uncomfortable. First of all, the crotch is really long on those, and the fit is just not as flattering. Now with the Tilly and the Buttons, Jamie and Joe, I just feel like the way they're cut is just more flattering. The, the crotch isn't super long, it fits the hips really nicely, um, and it just was a better pajama pattern. So for my husband and I, I use the Tilly and the Buttons, Jamie and Joe pajama pattern, but for my kids, I use the Simplicity 1520, which is perfect for them. The shorts part of that pattern is also good. I've done shorts for them out of that pattern, and it, they came out really nice. Um, and so I use the Spider-Man fabric that I purchased from Joann's. It is Into the Spider-Verse. I love this particular fabric so much. And now my kids and I were huge fans of Spider-Man, especially the more recent one that came out that's a cartoon, because Spider-Man, I believe, is Dominican. And it's so cool for my kids to have a superhero that kind of looks like them. And so we really enjoy watching that movie, and I felt so proud to be able to make them some pajama pants in one of their favorite themed uh, characters. So anyway, uh, we all got matching bottoms and for the top I purchased another SVG from Etsy and it is a Spider-Man swinging from webs and a hat and I also purchased special uh, type font from Etsy and so that the letters would look like Spider-Man writing and so it says into the Spider-Verse on the bottom of the shirts and those were our Christmas jammies. I was so proud of them. I think I've started something now. I think I might actually make us family jammies every year. Um, now my husband probably won't wear them. He does not like pajamas but he did indulge me for Christmas and wear them and it was really great to see him in pajamas matching the boys and so I'll insert a couple pictures of that. Um, but in the future, I'll probably use something that he will like better that's not like a traditional pajama pattern uh, or pajama fabric. Maybe some jersey or waffle knit or something like that. But I really enjoyed making us matching jammies and it was such a special treat for us this year. Alright, so 
Um, one of the shirts that I screen printed was for my friend Deidre and it was another Cricut blank that I purchased and it was a raglan t-shirt and the words let's get cozy were screen printed on the front using sublimation ink that I purchased from Cricut as well in red and black buffalo check. I love the way this came out. I paired it with some Jamie pajama shorts and also some uh, knee length Sherpa socks. So that was my gift to my friend and let's see what else did I make? I made two Made by Jack's Mom I Can Zip hoodies for my boys. Now this was a labor of love, let me tell you. Okay, first of all, if you never color blocked a sweatshirt or anything before, it requires you to cut additional pieces in different fabrics. So that takes a little bit more time and creativity. Also, um, I wanted to add some planets to these sweatshirts. Now, I used a fabric that I had in my stash that I purchased for them months back, and it is this really great gray sweatshirt fabric, and it has sequined stars all over it. Now, I took some black sweatshirt fleece that I purchased from Girl Charlie to create the hood and the sleeves in the back of these hoodies, but I used that sequin fabric to create the pockets on the front, and it just came out so nice, and my boys like it so much. And I also used that sequin um, fabric for the pockets on the insides, too. And then I just added a little black zipper to the front. But to put the cherry on the top of this project and what actually made it a real labor of love is that I added these iron-on planet patches and alien and astronaut patches on there and they were not good iron-ons <laughs> they did not stick well at all they only stuck well enough for me to actually go back and stitch them on later so they kind of helped to stay in place because it had that sticky side but it actually didn't work very well as a standalone project um, I actually purchased these patches on eBay and while the patches themselves are beautiful the adhesive part on the back was no good so after stitching all the planets on there and staying up until about 2 o'clock in the morning to create these awesome sweatshirts, I felt very proud and excited to gift those to my boys on Christmas morning. And they love them and seeing them wear these Zippo hoodies has brought me so much joy. So it was worth it. <laughs> all right so I did two pattern tests which I can't share with you at this time all I can tell you is that they're dresses and that they're fabulous and I can't wait to share them with you they will be released this winter and they were challenging and that they used two different things that I've done before in the past um, that upped my sewing skills but combining them into one item um, so it was a, they were longer sews longer projects but I love the way they came out and I think you're gonna enjoy these patterns so much when they're released so stay tuned those are coming last but not least I made a McCall M7936 which is a jumpsuit I love the way this jumpsuit came out I chose to make it in a lightweight four ounce denim which actually feels slightly like a chambray, very lightweight. It'd be great for a shirt or something like that. Um, but I made it out of a jumpsuit and I added a really nice zipper that matches perfectly on the front of it. It has two front patch pockets and it has a sneaky side seam pocket and waist tie. Now, the reason why it only has one side seam pocket is because I batch cut my projects so I will cut up about 10 projects at a time and add all the sewing notions to them in little bags and then that way when I'm ready to sew I just grab a bag and I get to sewing and at some point when I cut this particular fabric and pattern I accidentally only cut enough pocket pieces for one side seam pocket instead of two. I don't know how that happened. I don't remember doing it. <laughs> I have no idea when I pre-cut this project because I cut it so long ago and I was sewing so much for other people in these last couple months that I didn't sew for myself so I had no idea when I actually prepped this project but I did not want that side seam pocket to go to waste so I used it in addition to the front patch pockets and I'm pleased that I did because this particular denim is so lightweight that if I were to put my cell phone in those front pouch pockets, it would sag on one side and I don't like the way that looks. I did not want to disrupt the style of this jumpsuit. So having that side seam pocket means I can slip my phone in there and it lays nicely against my leg and doesn't disrupt the front design of the jumpsuit. Love it. It came out so good. I have plans to make more, maybe in linen next summer. I just love this pattern. It's super easy to follow. There aren't a ton of pieces and it's just a great project. So 
there you have it folks those were all the things that i made oh wait 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 i lied i actually made a couple of other things which i'm actually excited to share with you um so i have shared this on my channel before but i don't remember when um but i actually like to draw and paint a lot it was actually one of the things i was extremely passionate about as a child and as a teenager um and in college as well but i kind of fell off once i started having kids and i stopped drawing and painting as much but when I was in quarantine and I had COVID and couldn't be with my family and friends, I did a lot of painting and sketching. And so I thought it would be really awesome if somehow I could take my beautiful watercolor paintings and put them on clothing. So um, what I did was I asked my husband for Christmas for a printer that I could transfer into a um, supplement sublimation ink printer and so he bought me an Epson printer which I added sublimation ink to and so now I can print on special sheets and transfer my art onto the things that I make. So now for the first few uh, test runs I actually used some polyester workout shirts that I purchased. I think they're Hanes Her Way. They are Hanes Sport that I purchased on Amazon and I love these shirts so much, um, but this particular one was one of my first watercolor paintings that I had done in a very long time. And it is just of four ladies in different colored head wraps, different skin tones, and I love the way it came out. Now this was my first attempt at trying this process, so I have ideas on how I'll make it better in the future. But um, one thing I wasn't happy about is that with this particular printer, the ink doesn't recognize certain shades of brown. So my lighter skin lady on the front, her skin tone is a bit olivey green, and that was not intended. So other than that, um, I love the way that process worked out, and it might be hard to see on camera, but you can actually see my brush strokes uh, in the print. And because it's sublimation ink, it is baked into the fibers of this material so it won't fade it won't chip or anything it's smooth and soft it just feels like the shirt felt before the image was on there and i love how that came out and i have plans to add lots more of my art projects onto pro sewing projects so another one that i made and actually this one might have been my first one because it has some mistakes to it is this print now at some point in my life i would really love to create images that are beautiful and inspiring for women and young children of color and this particular painting i made was ladies of the night and it was two women floating in space in front of the moon and the actual painting came out really beautiful, but when I transferred it onto here, it did not transfer it as nicely. Part of the issue is I don't think I applied the right amount of pressure when I put my heat press on the top half because some of the ink didn't transfer onto the material. Um, the other thing that I wasn't particularly pleased with is that just like with sublimation transfer sheets through Cricut, with the sublimation sheets that you can print on, you can absorb they can absorb skin oils and when that happens you can see here my fingerprints are in the actual print so this will be a shirt that i sleep in it's not a big deal it was a test run and they were shirts that i already had on hand but now i know what to do better next time and i'm really excited to do more projects like that the last thing I did is I bought some of these Cricut blanks as well. These are canvas totes, and as you can see, I put one of my paintings on the front of one of these totes. I have lots of paintings that I did when I was in quarantine. Quite a few of them are floral prints and prints of fruit that I painted, and I love the way those came out, and I can't wait to figure out how to apply them to some of my sewing projects. All right, that's everything. I want to say that I made around 42 things in total in the months of November and December. I'm so proud of myself for all the things I was able to accomplish and gift to my family and friends. And I'm proud of myself just for coming through this year and having something positive to share with people and to encourage people as well as to encourage myself to keep going and I thank you all for staying with me on this journey and thank you for all of your comments that you left me over this last year and I just hope that we all have a better 2021 and to celebrate the fact that I have hit 
my one year sewing anniversary I will be doing a giveaway I will post another video to share the information for that giveaway soon so if you'd like to enter please do um, come back to my channel and look for that video it will require you to subscribe to not only my YouTube channel but also my Instagram page and I will have my children to help me select a winner so if you'd like to enter that giveaway please do come back to my channel and check out that video it will be titled appropriately so that you know that that's the video for the giveaway all right one more thing i just recently posted a video sharing my nighttime skincare routine for removing makeup i recommend that if you have skin and you wear makeup and that you watch that video the items that i'm using that video are game changing if you don't know this i have struggled with adult acne i've actually had acne my whole life but more recently, I've had some issues with mask acne. You may be able to relate, maybe not, but from wearing a mask 40 hours a week, it has caused some irritation, and I've cleared a lot of that up using the products that I'll be sharing in that video, so please do watch that video after you watch this one. Anyway, I thank you so much for your continued support, and I hope you have a wonderful 2021, and I just can't wait to continue to make more content for you. All right, have a great day. Bye.